And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Fred, it's so time, passionate, buddy! Passionate about life, Unfortunately, it career. is time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, who is more than brother to me. I am Bracey. Like because it's time it. once again for oh, all of us here at the Pope on Film right, podcast well, to casually you saunter exist. our way Can into the third and final second, act Brad? of the show. And it is said third act, nine, wherein nine, we nine, finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new low fat, high in fiber, and now available yes, without a prescription. The when week. Was the time you and this me, week, Brad. we discuss the long lost Flintstones reboot from 2001, from Thursday. the beginning of September oh, to get to the of 2001, problems, which is why all of America the remembers the September 2001. So what I would like to do is a little role yes. play. If anyone mentions September of 2001, like they say, Ugh, in a that Flintstones in reboot, am I right? Oh, can Worst I, thing to happen all Flintstone, year. I would yes. like you to pretend Nothing you are else husband, beats it. Coming home from a typical day of work. Uh, it's now time for our Mr. discussion of the Remember, Flintstones on the rocks. Evening at home. Or, as I like to call it, how Wilma got her groove back. Oh, yes. I'm so exhausted. I so I put this thing together. Oh it goes pretty mess. hard. The video that you were watching, as well do? as the background, the Flintstone on the rocks. Absolutely really proud of this. Nothing. I threw it together. Uh, it features a few scenes Wilma, from the Flintstones on the rocks. A lot of scenes enough. of I them. The uh, I think door. I have three or four now, commercials of the Flintstones dip? selling Winston brand cigarettes. Okay. And then <laughs> one long <laughs> bit of the Flintstones <laughs> selling Bush beer. Really? Yeah, so Fred and Barney get fired so from the from the quarry. <laughs> so they go to their favorite bar and drink tasty Bush beer. And then they concoct some plan and yada, 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 and it doesn't work. So they go back to Fred's house and drink more delicious bush beer. So, uh, and also a lot of clips of uh, Fred uh, trying to kill somebody. Yes. With a hatchet. I, I love that clip. So, okay. Now, I know that Bunny hated the Flintstone on the rocks, but hear me out. Okay. Okay. Hear me out. Uh, speaking of 2001, uh, Seth MacFarlane, who was supposed to be in one of the planes that went into uh, the Twin Towers, but he was hung over, so he was 15 minutes late to his flight, and they wouldn't let him on. Yeah. Uh, so the success of Family Guy is solely because he obviously did some sort of a deal with the devil. Period. Yes. You cannot convince me otherwise. Uh, it, a few years ago, I would say 2014, 2015, he tried to reboot the Flintstones as an adult Family Guy type sitcom, but the TV networks passed on it. So when you're talking Flintstones <coughs> reboots... <coughs> Yeah. I would <laughs> rather watch the Flintstones on the Rocks by whatever the unreleased Seth MacFarlane pilot is. I'm just saying. So, uh, um, I don't think that the Flintstones on the Rocks is that bad. I mean, as far as reboots of classic television shows go, this, this does look authentic AF. The Flintstones on the Rocks. I mean, this aired on the Cartoon Network the same year as Shrek and Legally Blonde. And yet, if you just came up to me and said, hey, The Flintstones on the Rocks, this is an animated uh, movie that they made in 1965, I would believe you because this movie is ridiculously faithful to the original TV show. And for that alone, I don't hate this. That being said, holy crap, Fred Flintstone's a racist bastard yeah oh god yeah holy shit fred flintstone is racist 
racist as hell in this week's movie. But I so just don't. I just don't find that very original. You know, I don't like. Yeah. Okay, so so maybe we didn't see a lot of this kind of thing that we see in this movie in the Flintstones itself. <clears throat> <clears throat> but certainly it makes sense if you look at it from the perspective of the honeymooners, which the Flintstones is taken from. They're very yep. mean spirited. Yes. It's all very mean spirited. It's not. It's not exploring anything particularly new. Yeah. It's just worse. Yeah. Uh, however, with the short runtime, I'd rather watch this than than that uh, that movie they did. The actual theatrical release Flintstone movie. You frozen again? Where Fred Flintstone's a spy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're good? We're good. You froze for a second there. Okay. 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 So I cede the floor to the Honorable Bunny Williams. Bunny, tell us what you think about this movie. Oh, it's just crap. It's just crap. crap. It's, yeah, it's, it's very mean spirited. It is, it's, it also feels like it's kind of been done before. Like, like you could see, you could see Okay, so like, it makes a certain bit of sense that the Flintstones are this way, that they are mean-spirited, that they are racist, but it seems like a very simple scratch at the surface instead of really doing something funny. Yeah. Okay, so here you go. Okay, so uh, Fred and Barney went to a bar. They just got fired, and now they're going to go see their uh, bartender and drink a delicious bush beer while they try and figure out how to get their jobs back. They're getting drunk right now. Okay. That's fascinating to me. This was very much an adult cartoon that was originally meant for adults. And then somehow, by the time I was born, it was Saturday morning kids shit. Yeah. And, and that must be fascinating, you know? Like, is South Park going to be playing like on PBS Kids when I'm 70 years old? It's possible. But, that's, but but seriously, the collapse of society will happen first, so. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, the giant asteroid will hit before that. So, let's do some stats. The Flintstones on the Rocks was a, a an animated movie that played on Cartoon Network just once, and they never aired it again. It was a made-for-TV movie. It just meets the Dumbo threshold. Yeah. Dumbo, the Disney animated movie Dumbo, was, uh, I believe, 61 minutes long, which is basically the episode of the Fall Festival episode of Parks and Recreation. There are episodes of The Office that are longer than the movie Dumbo. So I believe that to be the cutoff that. Okay, if you're shorter than Dumbo, you're not a movie. Period. Uh, John Carpenter made a horror movie specifically for like a religious organization, and it was considered lost for a very long time, but then someone found it, and I'm like, oh, this might be interesting to watch, but it's 59 minutes long. That's not a movie. Yeah. If your movie is shorter than an episode of Maury, then you're not a movie. Uh-huh. So uh, the Flintstones just barely meets the 
gumbo requirement for this to be considered a movie. Um, this was an attempt by Cartoon Network to reboot the Flintstones back to its roots as a primetime cartoon for adults. This movie aired only once, approximately one week before 9-11. Talk about bad timing. Yeah. Or maybe it's not bad timing. Because once this aired, basically Cartoon Network went, yikes, nobody likes our Flintstones reboot. Uh, this was a big time mistake. Did we have Betty and Barney fuck? <laughs> this that's in this movie. Did we have um Fred get a hand job from a strange man in a in a in a shower? We did. Holy crap. This this was not good, huh? How can we have people forget that this movie ever existed and then a week later, boom, 9-11. So, look, no one here is in any way saying that Cartoon Network was responsible for 9-11. Bonnie, can you say Cartoon Network was responsible for 9-11 for me, please? I, I, I think it was responsible for 9-11. I mean... There you go. You heard it first this. from Bunny Williams. Cartoon Network was responsible for 9-11. We are through the looking glass here, people. Yes, we are. Black is white. Dogs are cats. Peanut butter is jelly. There's a weird claymation section to this. Uh, be sure and stick around because uh, in a little bit I will be singing a musical number which uh, you are all going to want to hear. I love this clip that keeps playing of Fred chasing someone with a meat cleaver. It came from an episode of the Flintstones that I saw as a kid that legitimately scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad some... you included the way out. Oh yeah, the I way like out. The way I out. love the way out. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's your name? John okay, Lennon? And what's your friend's name? Paul Mix something? Look, guitar bands, guitar bands are on their way out. Guitar bands are not popular anymore. No one's going to care about the Beatles. And look at this. Even Fred got into a, a guitar band. Yeah. And also, the Royal Order of Water Buffaloes, can we just admit that this is just a psyop. I mean, it, they're the deep state, really. They, they are, yeah. Illuminati. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm sure they tied to the Masonic Temple somehow. Uh, yeah, somehow. Uh, hey, let's play a really quick game before it starts, before the, the, the preview starts that I put on this video. I'm going to say the name of a professional wrestler, and you are going to guess what their Flintstones name is in the 2015 film, The Flintstones in WWE Stone Age Smackdown. Okay. Are you ready, Bunny? Okay. Okay. Mark Henry. Mark Henry. Mark Henrock. No. No. It 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 the last name is the same. <laughs> I'll give you that. Mark Henry. Mark Henry. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. <laughs> I believe in you. You got this, Bunny. No, no, I'm I'm completely ah. blank. Marble Henry. Marble Henry. Okay, here's another one. Uh, CM Punk. You got this. You got this. I can tell you that this one's not surprising. 
CM Pumice. No, CM Punk Rock. Okay. So that's kind of... <clears throat> okay, uh, the last one. John Cena. This one's the worst. Like, they weren't even trying. Uh... It's John know. Cena Stone. John, John Cena, Cena Stone. Stone. Okay. John Cena Stone. Yeah, no, they weren't. Uh, yeah, they didn't even try when it came to John Cena. They didn't even try. Also, the song that's playing right now, to be clear, I am a big fan of the Flintstones from when I was a kid. I was a huge fan. <laughs> the the beginning, the first few seasons, the episodes of the first few seasons were a lot like uh, this week's movie, The Flintstones on the Rocks, because it was quiet. They had that jazz, that jazzy background music, yeah. and it wasn't all Pratt Falls and stuff like that. And uh, so uh, this that uh, video that was playing was uh, Pebbles and Bam Bam, it's a dream episode, and for whatever reason, they can't talk, and they're still babies, but they can perfectly sing one song and become celebrities. Yes. I would now like to sing that song to you. Of course, I'm not going to sing it. I'm not going to sing a song, Eleanor, on the podcast, because it's not like I have memorized this one song from a TV show from the 1960s. I mean, that I, would be weird. I bet you I could one. join you. Mommy told me something. A little kid should know it's all about the devil, and I've learned to hate him so. She said he caused this trouble when you read him in the room. But he'll never, ever leave you if your heart is filled with gloom. So let the sun shine in, face it with a grin. Smilers never lose. And frowners never win, so let the sun shine in. Face it with a grin. Open up your heart and let the sun shine in. Bitches! <laughs> they cut out the bitches part for TV. But uh, that is the song that they sing in that one specific episode of the Flintstones. And like all of the times that I sing on this podcast, of course, there's a Tom reference. So there's a video coming up on the podcast. Uh, Tom and I, he was a friend of mine. We were very close and he was straight. We were two straight guys that just happened to spend all of our time together and sometimes cuddle and kiss. Uh, that's just what straight dudes do. So uh, we would oftentimes go out for a day or for the weekend or just go off almost sort of like a vacation and he would pay and he would drive and s spend all of his money on me his straight friend who was of the same sex two guys that were very close and sometimes showered you know it would, like straight dudes do uh so what we would do regularly is we would drive to the grand canyon we wouldn't go see the Grand Canyon, though, because on the road to the Grand Canyon, they, you pass through a small town where there was a, a, a granite company. And so they built a fake bedrock city and charged people like five dollars to go and visit it. And they had a giant brontosaurus that had a slide so you could slide down like in the opening credits of the Flintstones. And you could go into Barney's house and Fred's house. And so Tom and I would drive like three and a half, four hours to go visit this park and hang out for like an hour and then go home. It was absolutely yeah. pointless, but we would do it all the time. And so we we became good friends. We became a very uh, good fans of the Flintstones. They had a movie theater at Bedrock City in Vail, Arizona, where uh, they had a movie theater that would just play on a loop the first two episodes of the Flintstones ever. 
And Tom and I would just go in there, smoke cigarettes, uh, sneak in some beers. We'd yeah. be drinking inside of the Flintstones Theater. It is really shitty. It was really, I say was, it was really shitty. The place closed down. Uh, ooh, new shoes. I like them. Very nice, Eleanor. So, yeah, everything has a Tom connection. So, that's my Tom connection. Uh, so, as Bunny was saying, uh, Cartoon Network is responsible for 9-11 uh, as a way to make the public forget about this week's movie. Yes. Uh, this is an adult Flintstones reboot. Because the reboot because originally the Flintstones was on primetime for adults. You're you're welcome. Um, you're welcome, American Dad. Yeah. You're welcome, Archer. You're welcome, th uh, the Simpsons. The the Flintstones uh, was your daddy. Um, but this is a surprisingly adult reboot. You hear Betty and Barney fucking? Yeah. In this movie? That's crazy, right? Apparently, Betty's a giggler. <laughs> I don't want to have sex with someone who's just <laughs> the whole time. That's creepy. <laughs> it's like having sex with Betty Crocker. <laughs> Ew. That's just weird. And then Fred gets a sponge bath and a handjob from a stranger, probably opening Fred to some bisexuality. In his world, he doesn't download Grinder; He downloads Graveler. Yes. G-R-A-V-V-E-L-R is how it would be spelled. I've thought a lot about, about this lately. And then there's Fred doing Chevy Chase and National Lampoon's Vacation with a Roxican girl. <laughs> that was weird this is a strange ass movie so in 1959 Hanna-Barbera filmed a 90 minute pilot called The Flagstones and it was basically the Flintstones except they were called the Flagstones and Wilma was voiced by June Foray <sighs> hmm A.K.A. Rocket J. Squirrel, Magic on the Duck, Natasha Fatal. And get this. Okay, so it, uh, Hanna Barbera made the 90 minute pilot in 1959. Guess when it aired on TV, Bunny? Uh, 64. Early 60s, like 63, 64, something like that. No! 1994! The, the pilot was lost. Or... The Good. pilot was lost. Cartoon Network discovered it in a New York City storage facility. Mama. I find that fascinating. Fascinating. So right now they're showing the really crappy low rent uh, of Bedrock, Flintstone's Bedrock City. Uh, yeah. If you go into Fred's house, he is supposed to have a uh, bowling trophy on his uh, uh, fireplace, on his mantle. It's not there because I stole it. Okay. It was a different time. I was a teenager. And I stole Fred. I may have also taken some risque pictures on Fred's bed. Okay. I just showed Fred's bed. Tom and I took some pictures. Like two straight dudes do. Two straight dudes who sometimes uh, kiss and hold each other when they're sleeping and uh, uh, jack together. Like two straight guys. Two fellas. Yeah. That's just what you do. Um, so, so that's what they're showing now. And before, I'm not sure if you noticed, Bunny. Uh, this movie... Uh, Mr. Slate is voiced by the original Mr. Slate from the TV show. Really? This is, yeah. Everyone else has been uh, changed. Uh, Frank Welker does Dino. Uh, Tress McNeil, who voiced uh, 75% of all female animated characters, does Wilma Flintstone. 
Kevin Michael Richardson, big black dude, does Barney Rubble. Uh, Dino is voiced by Frank Welker. The bellboy is voiced by SpongeBob. Get this. In the beginning, there's a marriage counselor that's voiced by Zelda Rubenstein. <laughs> The medium from Poltergeist. His cartoon is clean. Yeah. <laughs> that was Zelda Rubenstein. Oh, yeah. For no reason at the end, I just put an Ed Wood movie. I forgot to <laughs> mention that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I don't know where I downloaded this copy of Night of the Ghouls from, but it has Mexican subtitles. Really? Hola. Soy Criswell. It's in English, but... For some reason, it's Spanish subtitles. I freaking love it <laughs> so much. Uh, so um, before, I'm not sure if you saw the preview that played, Bonnie, but uh, I put in the preview for the Flintstones and WWE Stone Age Smackdown because this movie was the last ever Flintstones production until 2015 when Hanna-Barbera teamed up with uh, the WWE to make some wrestling animated movies for kids they made a jetsons one they made two scooby-doo ones and then they made the flintstones and wwe stone age smackdown where fred accidentally invents professional wrestling with the help of and this is true marble henry daniel Bryrock. instead of the bella twins it's the boulder twins ray mysteriopal the Undertaker, no change. CM Punk Rock and John Cena Stone. I like how I I hate it. I absolutely hate it. But I like how Fred invents professional wrestling, but it's too difficult. So he quits and sells the company to a shrewd businessman called Mr. McMagma. Uh-huh. And I like this because essentially that is also how the WWE happened. Vince McMahon just bought the company from his father and made millions and then ended up uh, fucking a lot of his employees. Yes. So uh, this movie was the last time also that the Flintstones appeared on TV. Really? I mean, there's been no there's been no reboot. I mean, they, they did the Flintstones WWE movie. That was straight to DVD. This is the last time that the Flintstones appeared on TV. It aired uh, well, about a week before 9-11, and then it never aired again. Never. Period. The end. File and that's kind of sad. The you know, I grew up when you could watch the Flintstones regularly the on TV. Kelton's guess that could I know the way out. I yes. know uh, the great gazoo. Although I hated the great Okay, gazoo. okay. Hey, hey. Here we come on the run with a burger on a bun and a dab of cola on the side. Your taste will tickle with a cool dill and pickle, now we and I forget the rest. The nice. Old. But that's uh, not a bad show. And, um, and you may join us soon. There was a Fruity Pebbles commercial that would air every Christmas. And uh, Ten minutes more. Santa comes. Yubba yubba Jesus too. Ho ho ho, I'm ha ha hungry. The catchphrase Yabba Dabba Doo came from the voice actor who uh, originally Fred was just supposed to say Yahoo! But uh, the voice actor's mom would always say, A little dabble do ya. What is that? For? What commercial was that from? What? Children. Okay, so uh, his mom would always say a little dabble, do ya? So he, he came up on the spot. Hey, instead of Yahoo, how about Yabba Dabba do? And they're like, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then so that's how that came along. Uh, so I think it's all right. You can find this on archive.org. You should probably download the Flintstones on the rocks now while you can before the government shuts down uh archive.org but i like this movie it's okay it's not the best but it's short and it's kind of stupid but i hope to never see fred and barney in a speedo ever again 
This is very true. So there's that. Fred Flintstone is a cop. That is good to know. I was kind of hoping that Wilma got it on with the with the jewel thief. <laughs> I, when I first saw this, it was shocking to see Wilma show up in lingerie to try and do it with Fred. And she was looking pretty good. That was, and she was looking pretty good. She should put her hair down more. But uh, anywho, uh, that's it for this week's movie, The Flintstones on the Rocks. I think it's all right. Bunny hates it. We've had a pretty odd year of trying to make this a different year where... We zig when you think we're going to zag. Yes. And when you think we're going to zag, we do zag to throw you off so that you're surprised when the next time we zig and then zag and then go back to zigging. So we've done blood, beat, flesh eating mothers, infinity poop, skin of marink. Brian and Charles was adorable. Marcel the shell with shoes on. The, I have never wanted to hug a movie more in my entire life. And now the. the Almost long lost adult Flintstones movie from 9 11. This has been a strange year and I am loving it. Uh, so uh, that is it for this episode. The next episode, there we are going to do one more episode before we start our summer of yo, where we watch every uh Rocky movie and also Boxing Helena for obvious reasons. Uh, Rocky 1 and 2 are supposed to be decent movies. I haven't seen them in forever. I loved Rocky 3 growing up. Rocky 4 is so horrible that it's wonderful. I absolutely hate to death Rocky 5. And I hated it so much that I never saw Rocky Balboa, Creed, Creed 2, or Creed 3. But I'm excited to get past Rocky Balboa to get to the Creed movies because I like Michael B. Jordan. What? But this will be interesting. And remember, Bonnie, we're going to count every yo in every individual movie, and then we're going to make a tally and see how many yo's in our summer of yo. Okay. Cartoon Network did 9-11. Bunny Williams. There's the quote right there. Put that on a shirt. <laughs> Cartoon Network did 9-11 in order to uh, hide uh, their uh, Flintstones reboot, the Flintstones on the Rocks. We finally, we finally got down to it. So we're going to do one more movie till we get to our uh, summer theme of Rocky movies. So we're doing the Super Mario Brothers movie, which recently aired in its entirety on Brazilian television. Okay. No, the new one that just came out. Yeah. Yeah, due to some due to some legal reasons, like the fact that in foreign countries it's difficult to uh, continue with copyright rules, an actual television station in Brazil aired the entirety of the brand new Super Mario Brothers movie, completely unrelated. Funny, um, go to the cough cough because uh, there's a file there. It is entirely in English, although when it's time to read something on screen, for some strange reason, it's not in English. It's in some foreign language. Who knows? Maybe we'll get to the bottom of it in the episode. Okay. Who knows why it's in some sort of different language, like Brazilian or Portuguese. I don't know. But uh, we're doing the Super Mario Brothers movie. Cool. Very, very cool. exciting. Because a couple of times in this episode, you were asking, why is this movie I making wanna, such a ridiculous amount of money? And I, we're going to get to the bottom of that. Yeah, I want to see what the big fucking deal is. But I don't want to contribute to it. Yeah, so uh, you are welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. It, it's all right. I don't think it's the best. Yeah. I think the only reason why it's a success is because... You know, I used to be in charge of the children's department at the Barnes and Noble, and people would come in and say, "Yes, where are your Mario books?" And it's like, there are none. Okay, do you have any other characters like Zelda? Or and it's like, Nintendo releases nothing. <laughs> I have nothing for you. They haven't made any books. They haven't made any comic books, any series. There's nothing. I hope that there one day is, but there just isn't. 
So I think the reason why the Mario movie is so successful is because finally Nintendo got over John Leguizamo and Anthony Hop- Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. No, Bob Hoskins, not Bob Anthony Hoskins. Hopkins. Oh, that would be scary. It's a me, Mario. <laughs> You froze again. That's Anthony Hopkins. Go. I think that's why the movie. I'm frozen again. Can you you're, hear me? You're on Can the you frozen. hear me? You're good. Am I good? You're I'm good. Frozen. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, so next week, we are doing the Super Mario Brothers movie. Be sure and join that. That's going to be really fun. But now that I'm looking back at this whole episode, the ups and the downs, uh, Bo is afraid, tornadoes, Cartoon Network did 9-11, presidents. Our 45th president, fuckface Von Dumbass, and his vice president, Davey from Davey and Goliath, how Wilma got her groove back, that he's a giggler. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode of the podcast. Okay, good. I felt that I, I agree with that statement. I felt the same way, but I didn't want to step on your toes because I feel you're the person who makes the decision as to whether or not this is a success. But yes, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend May Lane, and on behalf of uh, Natasha Maxwell, Mal, Eleanor, Amber, and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathen. Craig was so passionate, passionate about life, his career. Me. Lately, I feel like I don't exist. Can you just call me a baby? Uh, (laughs) I am a grown up. You exist. I (laughs) got stuck. Do 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 do